Peace and love, everyone. My name is Andrew Hewson. I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm here with my friend David Davija Buckland. Uh, David is an author. He has a blog, davija.ca. He also has a book, Our Natural Potential. And in both his blog and his book, he explores the unfoldment of enlightenment and how that uh, shows up in the midst of daily living. David and I have been exploring this same subject together over the past year, uh, having various conversations surrounding topics that we feel are relevant for those that are in the midst of this process. So today we're going to be discussing purification and the unfoldment of a collective transition that we both feel that we are in the midst of currently. So thank you so much for being here with me today, David. Well, thank you, Andrew. It's a, a joy to have another conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is quite a transition taking place in the collective. And we're seeing a lot of drama on the surface, climate change, politics, the pandemic, uh, inequality, these exaggerated polarities uh, going on in all these different uh, areas of life. But it's really important that we understand that we're in a rising age. This isn't a, a indication of a collapse of civilization or something like that, which has happened before over, over even one of these issues. But in the current time, we're in a rising age. It's, it's like um, the tide is coming in. The mm -hmm. ocean is rising and that lifts all boats because we're in this together. Consciousness isn't a unique thing created by a, a specific biology. Rather, it's a collective thing that we share and we're each expressions of that. This uh, process of transition has been going on for some decades. Uh, it began to really uh, be felt in the 70s when many people uh, took up more effective meditation practices. And it accelerated a lot about 14 years ago when um, some of those people who had been meditating for many years began to awaken, uh, as well as other people uh, with a good path. And um, it's accelerated again about four years ago. And even, even about a year and a half ago, um, we're now seeing uh, things unfolding in people's experience that haven't been really talked about in the uh, by, by spiritual teachers for even hundreds or even thousands of years. Hmm. It's a pretty significant. Some of the some of what's unfolding is is uh, quite significant. And but along with that process of unfolding, quite beautiful flowering, there's a lot being pushed to the surface to be healed. We don't, it's useful to store, to understand that we don't store our stress uh, in a personal body, so to speak. There's a little bit of that. There's certainly, uh, we can find when we're uh, purifying that there'll be sensations in the body uh, indicating a release. But a lot of our baggage we store in the collective. It's together, it's in the environment. Nature tries to purify to some degree, sometimes through storms and, and other kinds of events. But um, there's a lot going on uh, in, in, the, uh, in the collective. And all this rising consciousness is almost like an enforced healing going on. Um, and it's really valuable if you recognize that's what's taking place. Because if you don't, then you, you run into uh, issues with, uh, you know, pushing back against it or, or uh, resisting or, or getting into the drama and, and uh, engaging all the, these, the surface dynamics. And, you know, this just makes it much harder uh, for people going through this process. Hmm. It's kind of like uh, one of my teachers, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, he, he used to talk about uh, it as a phase transition. And you give the example of, of uh, boiling water. Just as the water is about to boil, it goes through this transition point uh, called roiling, where the water gets really agitated and then it settles into a boil. So the roiling is actually more agitated than, than the boiling when the water is transitioning from fluid to 
um, to uh, gas. So there's this this kind of roiling going on a little bit in the collective, <laughs> hmm. and uh, so it's really important to understand um, what's purification, because we can sort of look at at things taking place, and uh, for example, if we've gotten used to paying attention to how the environment is responding to what we're doing, uh, we can use that as a signal to indicate what's being supported, what's the right direction, what's not being supported, what's the wrong direction. Um, but that can get a little muddy if there's a lot of purification going on. So then it becomes important to recognize uh, what's leaving, what's being rebuilt, what's relaxing, what's opening, what's contracting, you know, these various dynamics that are taking place behind the scenes, behind the stirring up that might, we might be feeling in the body, in the emotions, uh, in, the, in the mind, in the ego, uh, just to being a little bit, if we're able to, just to step back a little bit and, and just observe. And, mm. and, and, and then we can use the, the intellect and say, okay, what is this? What's driving this um, desire for drama? <laughs> um, what's letting go? What's arising? You know, there, there's uh, being able to discriminate uh, what's going on just a little bit better can really help uh, our process. And, and then we're supporting this unfolding and we're engaging in it rather than trying to fight it or, or uh, battle with it. Yeah. I think it's also important to note that um, this isn't about concepts. Uh, these are things that we have to learn through direct experience, mm -hmm. okay? by paying attention, by noticing, um, and by reflecting on, on, our, on what we've experienced. Some people find journaling, for example, to be valuable when you're going through a, a rough patch and to get a, a sense of perspective. Yeah, very beautiful. I find that one of the most helpful uh, understandings when it comes to looking at uh, purification is um, a concept that I use, uh, surfacing. Yeah. And what surfacing points to is this uh, recognition that there's material that is present that is unseen. It's, it's sort of like the hidden past, we might say. And the past, the so-called past is hidden in the present. And it is uh, the accumulation of impressions, unresolved experiences, um, a, a layering of residue. And there are uh, two different primary directions um, for this residue, we might say. There's the direction of reaccumulation or recondensation, where the material is stratified in that limited identification and it moves to restructure. It moves to continue out of a, a survival oriented intelligence. And then there's a, another possibility and that's for there to be enough openness and enough willingness for that material to move in the direction of resolution, to, to move in the direction of um, evaporation uh, of being um, converted uh, of the resistance surrounding that being released. When it comes to surfacing, it's also important to recognize that there's a significant portion of the population which isn't interested in uh, collective transition or, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the possibility of healing or, or even the concept of purification. These things uh, just do not even come onto the radar for them. And in certain, you know, circles and groups, um, such as those that would be watching a video like this, it's, it's, a, it's a common understanding. It's something that's often discussed. But there can be a misperception uh, that everyone has this uh, understanding or that everybody uh, sort of should at least <laughs> be thinking along these lines. So when we look out at uh, what seems to be going on in the world, a lot of that is, is within the realm of, uh, of experiencing that just really isn't interested in you know, conscious awareness and uh, the potential of uh, sort of recognizing a more 
uh, fundamental uh, aspect of our of our nature. That that being said, for those that are uh, gifted with the grace of being able to um, experientially recognize um, what surfacing is pointing to and how we can be with that in a more effective and efficient way, there is uh, what we might consider to be an impersonal responsibility, um, a responsibility that doesn't belong to uh, us as uh, a separate, so-called separate uh, individuals, but to the truth of that conscious awareness that we are all communing in together. Um, there's a responsibility uh, to face what hasn't been faced and to be willing to look at those things that haven't been looked at, to be willing to allow those things that haven't been allowed. Uh, the human experience uh, is one that is conditioned in, into not allowing a lot of things, uh, to, uh, <laughs> trying to not allow things. Yes. And that is a part of this accumulation of residue. And now, uh, as you pointed to, there's enough clarity um, for many that there is the ability to consciously and attentively allow this material that perhaps before there just wasn't enough clarity uh, to really address that. We, there wasn't, we were not in a position to adequately um, be with that material. There wasn't enough power, there wasn't enough support it's not that it wasn't there, but that we weren't aware of its presence. Or our so, ability to take a step back from it. Yes, we exactly. Were a little, little too much in it. Exactly. Yes, that's, we, we, that's what we felt like we were. And, and still, when this stuff comes up, it, it's, we could say that it's stratified in meanness. And so it has the flavor of, um, you know, me oftentimes contained within it, even when um, we do not feel like we are a, a me anymore. It's the residue of the sense of being a me. And this, this material is, as I said, it's actually stratified in that limited level of identification. And so it has a movement to survive in a certain sense. It has a movement to want to, to, express itself in, in the field of action, to, to come into being uh, in a way that perhaps uh, seems to uh, attempt to solidify some uh, sense of doership or ownership or authorship. And the, the possibility of observing that uh, material prior to its, its, uh, its movement into behavioral expression is something that uh, we all have access to. We all have access to being able to recognize when something is arising in our experience. And even sometimes when it, when it does come into behavior or when it does come into verbal expression, just seeing uh, from that silent space, the, the emergence of that material. And as you said, looking at it, seeing where it's coming from, what it's motivated by. Yeah, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, they talk about that in terms of action, that at first we realize after the afterwards, oh, I did it again. I got caught up in it. I, I bent it on in this way or, or whatever, uh, however it arised, arose. And then there's the tendency for it to arise uh, or, or uh, noticing to arise during. Mm. We begin to act, and then we realize we're doing it, and then we have a choice to, to steer it or, and stop or whatever. And then at a certain point, when the awareness becomes clear enough, we reach a point where just the impulse arising becomes conscious, and then we can work directly with that impulse before we act it out. Mm. Uh, and the thing is, though, it, it's we tend to be in different levels of clarity in different parts of our life. Mm. We may find, uh, for example, that we're quite alert to our dynamics around work, but much more caught around certain kinds of relationships. Uh, or, you know, we're pretty clean with relationships, but get into 
trouble around uh, topics like money and, and uh, uh, possessions or whatever. And so it's just uh, each of us has kind of learning to do in, in different, uh, different areas. And it's also valuable to recognize that one of the things that's taking place with the awakening is, is there's a lot of, typically after we wake up, there tends to be a period of, of uh, accelerated uh, unpacking going on where we clear a lot of this that hasn't yet been seen uh, rises to, there's, we kind of create this big open space and then what's, what's unresolved rushes into this space to be seen and, and resolved. So we kind of burn through a bunch of stuff and we start to reach a place where uh, there just isn't the monkey mind the same way and the uh, a lot of the background drama and you know of emotions and so on like that settles out and we might not even recognize we have that until it settles uh, but uh, but that stuff settles out a lot and then we're basically just dealing with what arises in the cycles of time where mm -hmm. some event comes along and it triggers some history of whatever type of experience and and then there's something there to be healed and so on and then over time there too we and we settle in uh, more deeply still into that collective value uh, then we start to become like a washing machine where we're uh, processing the collective as well yeah it becomes more and more collective and less and less personal uh, on that level and the um, and so we are able to contribute to the whole, to the collective in that healing process. And so it's not just our job to clean up our stuff. There's also a collective group thing that's happening as more and more people uh, awaken and then and they become well-established there uh, that they process more and more of that collective stuff. As we touched on in, the, in previous conversations, there is the tendency to be better at healing um stuff that we've had we have familiarity with yes uh for example you know if we if we uh dealt with a lot of loneliness in, in our life and we we cleared that stuff ourselves we have a facility for clearing that and so we'll tend to notice loneliness coming up in the collective and processing that or well, it might be grief or anger or wh whatever our, our uh specialty is <laughs> <laughs> well it could be a, all of the above in some to some degree as well um right. But it's sort of just as, as the collective is lifting all boats, the collective also uh, takes on a healing role too. Um, we still have to deal with our stuff, but uh, there's a lot more uh, collective support uh, for that process. Because uh, yeah. the attachments and, the, and the, the hooks, you know, that's still our job. But um, the, the uh, mass, so to speak, uh, is, is getting gradually lessened. Not that there isn't still quite a lot there, but the, uh, um, uh, the I've seen a number of examples that, that illustrate that uh, just just the flavor, the the refined kinds of experiences that are that are taking place now, mm -hmm. that requires a clarity and subtleness in the collective that yeah. uh, that wasn't there uh, earlier on. So so there is examples of how. Um, as I touched on earlier, there, there's the, these openings to things that haven't been in experience for a very, very long time in, uh, by humans, I, I don't believe. And um, that's not possible unless there is that uh, clarity and purity that's rising in the collective. And yeah. just, we're just at the beginning in many ways that way. Oh, yeah. Just scratching the surface. Yeah, that's uh, along those lines. There's Yeah, there's definitely things that are unfolding that are hard to find in scriptures you know yeah. um it it just is there's not a lot of uh, material out there on some yeah. of the stuff that is uh that is blossoming forth it's really miraculous i just going back to a couple um of points you made that were really valuable surrounding like different areas of human experience i found that there's like a a natural intelligent movement into different degrees of contrast so um, one of the things that we'll notice is that there tends to be kind of a, a sense of um, a sense of stability and uh, and, and clarity, uh, but perhaps it is referential to um, our specific con context, you know, where we're um, whether we're in a relationship or not in a relationship or whether we have had little, you know, little social interaction or lots of social interaction or whatever the case may be. And so when we are sort of in this um, 
spontaneous movement to be in alignment with the whole, generally the body um, tends to find its way into different degrees of contrast so that it touches into areas that were previously untouched. And that means that we're, we're really becoming willing to encounter um, the, the so-called uncomfortable or, or those things that um, maybe before seemed outside of um, our, our realm of familiarity because it, it can be very uh, easy to find what seems to be a comfortable place that feels pretty well resolved <laughs> but it's not necessarily the most it's not necessarily the most evolutionary in its nature and it's not necessarily yeah. supportive of unfolding higher um, contextual modalities or stages of enlightenment and uh, different degrees of refinement so on and so forth yeah so there's nothing, it, there's nothing wrong with being in a place like that for a period of time oh, no of course not. don't expect it to <laughs> <laughs> well i mean classically i think you know in the in speaking of kind of density and in the rising age, you know, it pre, you know, in the in past centuries, it was actually considered preferable to find a space like that and to stay there. Yeah. Um, and it was even, you know, that was very that was uh, that was suggested and supported, and there were whole systems that developed sort of direction towards that possibility, and a lot of kind of escape based um, strains of of spiritual unfoldment that yeah. you know that recognized that perhaps they're just the, the so-called world was just too, there was too much going on uh, to be sort of dynamically involved and really make um, progress. And of course that was not, not the whole case. There were definite, um, you know, strains of uh, spiritual expression, which were very dynamic and included all kinds of different things. But I think generally as a whole, there tend to be more renunciation and now, and a lot of us have those, uh, the residue of those renunciation tendencies, you know, yes. sort of karmically speaking. And that's, another thing. That <laughs> that's, a, that's another thing that we'll have to encounter, um, <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the attraction to that and, and uh, you know, different attractions and aversions and so on and so forth. But, you know, we, for many of us now, we're in a household lifestyle and it's, uh, it's something that is dynamic. It's engaged not necessarily involved, but it's engaged, it's willing, it's present and um, dynamically active. And in that there's these degrees of contrast that we can encounter and touch into different areas that we didn't even know were there. You know, we could feel like, oh no, that's not there. And then <laughs> just take the <laughs> simple conversation or a trip to a, you know, wherever we go and, and something uh, is revealed. And it becomes this, this discovery when we have this understanding of purification and surfacing uh, and what I call transmutation as kind of like a baseline support and a recognition of a part of the Dharma of mm -hmm. a human incarnation during this time, then it's not an issue. It's something that is, a, that's something that's welcome. And um, we can also recognize that this material is fuel. It's something that when it's digested properly, when it is allowed and uh, the resistance is attentively released, actually ends up showing as uh, a greater bliss, hmm? a yeah. greater vibrancy, uh, a greater clarity, and a greater radiance. Hmm? And it has a polishing quality as well, hmm. which in increases the clarity and, and the, the refinement uh, of a yes. process too. Yes, exactly. So the, and, the, and it's important too, I think, to understand that there's a great intelligence to this process as well. Oh yeah. It's not like uh, we're jumping into a garbage pit or something like that. It, it's more there's a there's a almost like a schedule to the unfolding going on, yeah. and yeah. and there's an intelligence to the the purification process as well. Yes. And sometimes we can get something really big that can seem almost overwhelming, but because of that intelligence in the process, it's never going to be more than we can handle. Yes. And if, if there is, if it does turn up to that point, then there are natural switches in there that'll, that'll moderate it. And, yes. uh, you know, certainly there can be an intensity and a resistance to that intensity yes. uh, and that, that, that increases the sense of overwhelm perhaps. Yes. Um, but it's our own resistance that's creating that. It's not the, the, the uh, experience itself. Yes. And so there's this kind of uh, trust that's developed over time as we go mm -hmm. through this process. Mm -hmm. And then, and that allows us to uh, surrender more deeply and yes. to, to go into bigger and bigger places of this. And, and are, it's quite astonishing really what, what's possible. I mean, it's when, you, when you're able to 
uh, you know, expanding consciousness and expand the heart um, into its uh, full universal nature, mm -hmm. then it can it can hold the suffering of all humanity. Yes. All all at once. Yeah. And and not be overshadowed. Yes. And there is there is profound power in 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 the in the grounding. Yes. In, in a uh, in an, uh, an unfolding uh, enlightenment. Yes, it's and it can hold that suffering without suffering. Yes, and that's a part of what enables that to to do so. Sometimes there's this idea that um, suffering is you know uh, kind of denotes some sort of status or something uh, in terms of spiritual <laughs> realization, but um, it, you know that's a it's not necessarily. <laughs> The most helpful idea and, and definitely not how it shows up experientially one of the things that you said um, surrounding the intelligence is is just so vital and important um we we always receive proportionally um, what is pro appropriate to our degree of clarity and power so as we are uh, recognizing the truth of our reality um, as conscious awareness conscious awareness is recognizing itself waking up to itself realizing itself and passing through these different qualitative uh, recognitions of its own infinity, then there's different degrees of power. There's different degrees of clarity or subtlety, we could say. And that supports um, a depth of uh, proportional um, dishing out of material. So we receive that material in alignment with that. And having that healthy uh, self-honesty <laughs> which enables us to see, is this like something that's out of proportion or is it just the resistance to this, you know? Like, <laughs> the resistance if, is out of proportion. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's right. So, you know, it's, I've found that willingness, uh, willingness is such just, I mean, such a profoundly important word, like what it points to. Um, and there's actually a sweetness in willingness, a sweetness in the willingness to surrender. Yeah. And as we, uh, even after there's no sense of there being any kind of separate doer or author or thinker or mover anymore, um, that, that willingness can still taste the sweetness of itself. So it just begins to taste the sweetness of itself. And as you said so beautifully, that correlates with the heart sort of being cleansed and cleansed and open and revealed in its fullness. And so that sweetness of surrender actually becomes a nectar that our infinity is sort of drinking, drinking, it's drinking its own nectar of willingness as it is expressed through the humanity. Hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and then that love, uh, you know, that just continues to, uh, it's amazing because there's this some, you know, there's an idea that has crystallized in, in various ways surrounding kind of like, you know, love is love. There's, that's love. And then peace is peace. And then there's like, you know, bliss is bliss. But no, these, all of these, uh, which I would consider these to be different sort of aspectual reflections of, of infinity. Um, all of these have an infinite ability to seemingly increase in their yeah. intensity, it's it's amazing. There's no end to the potential uh, depth and intensity of of these aspectual reflections or or qualitative um, recognitions of reality. Yeah, and we can have this experience of what feels like, you know, ultimate peace or ultimate mm -hmm. love or whatever, and then there's more. Yes. And, yeah. and, and it, it keeps on the, the Upanishads uh, actually talk about that too. Um, there's a, a not sure, don't remember the exact. Uh, uh, I'm familiar with the verse you're talking about. It keeps going. It, like, you know? it talks about, yeah, 100 times the bliss of this, yeah. is this 100 times the bliss of this is this. And, and, and each of them ends with and the, and the, <laughs> uh, and the enlightened uh, seer or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and it just, you know, it just continues to unfold. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so I'd, we learn I'd, then that it's always it's complete, yet perpetually in process. So it's the sense of completion. It's not coming from lack, yeah. and but it's also at the same time in that in the fullness of this completion. 
you know, it's perpetually in process and that's where it's savoring its own sweetness and tasting, tasting that, um, yeah, that divine, uh, deliciousness, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny too, over, over time with the, with the blog, I've written about the heart in different ways and, and, uh, then I try to do the you know summary articles, and it's like, how many different hearts are there? You know? <laughs> <laughs> layers of layers. So you've got Anahata heart chakra, and then you've got the Hadaya, the high heart chakra, which is kind of like a, a higher octave, and then you've got sort of you know the divinity filling the heart, and, and yes. uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, just layers and layers of, of of the way the heart. We try and embody that because there's just so many layers of it in reality, you know, when we try and embody that, uh, that then there's, you know, that requires layers of it too. Yes, yes, exactly. So the, in, in, from the collected perspective then, there's a, there's a certain portion of the population which is more equipped to sort of engage in uh, and be with what we're, what we're talking about. And then there's another, you know, and, and when we talk about the collective, one of the things is that uh, the mind tends to have an idea that there's like this fixed sort of collective, you know, like there's a collective, you know, out there. But within the collective, there's such a range in all different soul groups and all different kinds of levels of conscious experiencing. Um, and, and although there is a general sort of consensus collective, yeah. there, there is this wide variety that's constantly fluctuating and, and, uh, so what it's really referential to is the field. It's the field of conscious experiencing. Yeah. Yes. And that field of conscious experiencing is what appears to be moving through that transition into a greater clarity. Mm -hmm. And so whatever is appearing in that field of conscious experiencing is automatically included and everything <laughs> is appearing in the field of conscious experiencing. <laughs> so. Yes. Yes, it's it's it's. I, I kind of use the term uh, nested on when I'm writing about it on the blog. It's all kind of nested. Every object has its own space of consciousness, and and many objects are are built of you know sub objects. I mean, the human body is a classic example. We don't tend to think about it, but our body is made up of trillions of cells. Each of those cells is its own life form, and then those cells are are grouped into clusters. You know, making up the skin or the liver or yes. or the you know fingernail or something like that. And yes. there's layers and layers of, uh, of uh, and then they have the larger thing, and then there's the body as a whole. And, and when we have this, this uh, uh, consciousness of a me that, ha that is whatever it is, and then there's the sort of the, the consciousness of ourselves as an American or a Canadian or, or uh, a, a, a Brit uh, mm -hmm. or whatever, and, or maybe part of a race or part of a family tradition or ancestry or and or or part of a profession uh or, or uh you know uh oh, this is my alma mater and you know there's all these kind of things or, or this is my house and my property property itself has a kind of a consciousness mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and it's all these uh interactive layers and in all in so many different ways yes. uh, all all uh playing a role yes and it, and all through that is this whole there's this movement to sustain Mm. to keep things keep the, the structure in place so that we can mm. live and and grow through that mm. and then there's the the uh movement to grow to evolve uh, mm. through that process and it's just an incredible amount of intelligence is required to to uh for both just for the for it to be it, it's just it's just amazing when you when you start to see the mechanics mm. and all these layers uh in your own experience uh just to, to see like the principles themselves are really simple, but the complexity of its expression is so vast and so uh, profound. And yet all of it has this flow of, of those principles in action and uh, unfolding. Mm -hmm. And when we can let go of our attempt to control and resist um, and soften all that, then we can step into that uh, so much more and uh, and then what that does is it allows life itself to support us yeah. and and the, the the natural movements we have within 
um, towards more, towards growth, towards uh, enjoyment, towards peace, all of those become much more supported. I mean, if we're resisting and trying to hold on and, and trying to control the environment, we're basically acting against this massive intelligence um, that's trying to support us. <laughs> we're we're, yes. we're kind of like we're we're behaving like the child having a tantrum in the, in the grocery store. <laughs> you know? Yes. Uh, when when uh, when our mother is trying to uh, support us uh, the whole time. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly it. And one of the things that can go along with that that tantrum is the expectation of others to have a similar. Uh, attitude or um, or demeanor towards this understanding. So that's kind of what I was getting at before when I when I yes. think I got off track. Is that you know it's about understanding the different levels of conscious experiencing. It's not you know it's not possible for things to be other than they are. And when it is, things are other than they are. Yeah, everything is unfolding in this spontaneous perfection. So there can be this tendency to kind of watch the news or look at other groups and, you know, from perhaps having a spiritual practice or, you know, being concerned about the, the possibility of a collective transition and saying, how can they be doing that? What is, why can't they, you know, see that this is important? Why are they acting like this or whatever the case may be? And it just becomes another form of separation. It becomes a subtle spiritualized way of, you know, kind of um, judging or critiquing uh, the environment when the most mature uh, possibility is for us just to turn around the subjectivity to turn back around on itself and to see that everything that seems to be going on out there is right here. And if in day-to-day -day life, there's the, uh, the, the willingness to observe what's arising in this experiencing and to take note of that and to allow that and to... Um, really dig into some some deep honesty surrounding that and be willing to heal and face um, these things in our own experience, then that's the greatest measure that we could ever uh, give to to this seeming world, you know? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and it allows us to be here to show up in a way that that most people aren't yet. Yes. And and it takes time. This is a it's a it's a process. Yes. Um, you know, we've been doing this for a very long time, and so it's a it's a it's an undoing that uh, doesn't take anywhere near as much time. That's the yeah. magic of it too. Is I mean, if you're actually completely present with what's arising to be seen, then it can be it can resolve in a few seconds quite often. Sometimes there's a really big one that takes a bit more, but a lot of it is just, just needs to be seen. And once yeah. it's seen, it's like there's a piece of the experience that's incomplete. Mm -hmm. It was seen as too much at the time, or um, there was, it required more time to process and it didn't happen at the time and was put aside and put aside and, um, and then resisted and so on. And now that it's coming to the surface and we give it that attention, it has the opportunity to, to just complete. It's all yeah. it needs to complete, and then it's it is dissolved. It's done. It's yeah. balanced. Uh, the, the the balance is restored. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a path that um, uh, I I teach called the four pillars, and uh, the first pillar is observation, and you know it's recognized that observation isn't something that is done. It's something that's already a given for experiencing. And through a certain intention or willingness, that observation begins to, to recognize um, different layers of experiencing as they're surfacing. And then there's a pillar of contemplative supplication. And this is where um, there's a, a prayerful attitude, um, an attitude that is appreciative and then also willing to receive um, deeper levels of clarity, deeper levels of truth. And in that is this, uh, this suggestion for writing daily and this writing is not like not like journaling in the sense that it's specifically um, intelligently uh, sort of geared towards the breakdown or just the the impersonal owning or the sort of clinical uh, observational 
uh, noting of the material that has arisen from a non-controlling space. And that sort of uh, also begins to bring greater clarity and allows for deeper insights. And then with that is what I call transmutation. And transmutation is the conversion of this latent energetic condensation that is uh, expressing itself as these, you know, these emotional reflections and psychological impressions and mental movements and behavioral expressions. And when that energetic condensation is attentively allowed, then it actually converts. And that's where I mentioned the understanding of it being fuel uh, before. So we're able to actually just be with that. And some of it may uh, feel like it, it needs to be just held for a while. One of the tendencies can be uh, for there to be like a, a wanting it to kind of process through or get through here, get out, you know, and um, get it done. <laughs> get it done, right. And from this kind of conversion perspective, it's actually nourishing to for it to be here for as long as possible uh, in a consciously attentive way. That means that there's no movement to control. It's relaxed, it's softening in, releasing the resistance around something. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, not pushing it away, not trying to manipulate it or manage it. And then in that, there is this conversion. It's actually a conversion in bliss because this material is condensated bliss. It's bliss that appears to have been fragmented or sort of uh, uh, concealed within itself, we might say. Yes. And so that bliss begins to um, reawaken or re-enliven through the conscious attentive allowing that shows up in the possibility of this human nervous system. And then that supports and cushions even more of that coming up. And it becomes this, uh, this toroidal flow, you know? And then as you said earlier, it begins to include these uh, collective layers. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And it's referential to what's appropriate, you know, in the context of our individuated uh, impressions and how that relates and all of these different things. And, you know, in higher stages, it can be very obviously collective and relates to our body not being linear anymore and recognized as being infinite and <laughs> the only body and those kinds of things. Um, so there's all kinds of refined possibilities there as well. And then the fourth pillar is service. And really the first three pillars that I went over are the greatest service possible, you know, because in these, in facing this material and allowing this material, uh, that translates into the whole field of human activity. But there's also the willingness to be of service wherever it is seen, you know, wherever it is recognized. So you were just saying something that kind of brought that uh, that forward and, and also this um, recognition that there, there's a lot of support here on this planet right now at this time, it also in the sense that there are certain incarnations that are here, um, a significant notable number of incarnations that are here as a support, yeah, that are here uh, as a part of this sort of transition period. Yes. And it's not important to kind of, you know, differentiate necessarily, but it, it is something that is noteworthy and, and uh, <clears throat> recognizable at a certain point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I looping back slightly to um, another one of the ways I frame it is that we can have these things that are incomplete that just kind of come to the surface and complete, mm -hmm. but quite often they've come to the surface before before mm -hmm. we were ready to deal with it. And our response was to resist it. Yes. To try and push it down. And yes. so that can, uh, depending on how we are with it, that can add a, another layer to it. Yes. And so what tends to happen for some of the big stuff over time is they have a whole bunch of layers. Yes. But when yes. they first start to surface, we kind of peel off a layer. Like mm -hmm. sometimes they describe it like peeling an onion. Mm -hmm. And they peel off a layer and then it comes up again and we peel off another layer and then it comes again and we peel off another layer and it kind of goes yeah. along until we finally get to the core. Um, and so it kind of seems like it keeps coming up over and over again, but it's not, it's, it's not exactly it, if, if we're not resisting the process and we're allowing it, we are healing those layers of resistance. And mm. then at some point we get to the core 
and the core has, I mean, the core can show up in different ways. Sometimes it can be so incredibly dense, it's almost like black energy, you know, or because or, or, or it, it, it's been so compressed and so yeah. repressed for so long, yeah. or, or it can be just like a really intense, sharp bit of, usually you can kind of tell because it's been in, it's been in there and, and, and repressed for so long. It has a, uh, an extra oomph to it, extra contrast, extra nice. uh, charge, uh, extra energy to it. And so it can be kind of like this more intense um, wave of relief. And um, yeah. when those go, that can be like taking a load off your back because when mm. you're carrying this stuff around, it's not exactly in the body per se, but it kind of like, it has um, hooks and, and sure. uh, uh, subtle associations that, that uh, tie yeah. it to us in a, in a way. And yeah. And it behaves like a, a shadow or a filter over our experience. Mm -hmm. Even though we're not yes. conscious of it at all. It'll still create a certain uh, biases. Yes. The way we respond emotionally, the way we sp respond conceptually. Yes. Uh, and so on like that. Because these are you know, kind of these big shadows. Uh, so they're quite impactful. Um, yeah. And there's the same thing as there in the collective as well. Beautiful. Um, collective things about... Uh, you know, the way, um, say, the, the French resisted a certain kind of experience or, or mm -hmm. expressed it a certain way and, and, and left a historical experience uh, unresolved. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps the French Revolution or, or elements of the Second World War or whatever can be there in the collective as well. And, and people purify uh, bits and pieces of that over time or, or their relationship with it or their ancestral ties or, you know, however that's uh, unfolding. There's a huge variety of, of uh, potential ways this stuff can show up. But the key is, is just to allow it not to engage it uh, or to be as, as uh, impersonal, as you mentioned, uh, as detached, as just observing, just seeing it as we can. Yes. To be with it and, and allow it to arise in our awareness. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, the difference between uh, watching a recording, uh, you know, watching our television or something versus stepping into it. You know, yeah. if we can just watch it and then, then we just bring that quality of consciousness to it and, uh, and then it, it allows it to complete and uh, resolve. Yes. Yeah. All amazingly beautiful points in in using kind of segueing from that television example a lot of times uh watching the news is something for folks you know where they tend to get kind of immersed in in material or discouraged or frustrated or whatever the case may be and it can seem like oh you know it's the news it's what seems to be going on out there that kind of is the source of this but one of the most helpful understandings is the understanding of reflection. And it's essentially recognizing that the nature of this uh, field of conscious awareness is reflective. And uh, it's not so much about what seems to be going on in the news necessarily, but what the news is reflecting back within yeah. your awareness, as you said. So um, we can, everything becomes a part of this uh, reflective uh, reverberation of the evolutionary purification uh, of conscious awareness within itself. And uh, you beautifully pointed out as well that some of this material is going to be piecemeal resolution. It's, it's not something that is a one and done kind of a situation. And having an attitude that's kind of just, uh, that isn't looking for an end I found I find it can be very very helpful. It's when it's for its own sake, when it's healing for its own sake, yeah. When it's out of just the commitment to be with for its own sake, out of the willingness, yeah, for its own sake, then we we don't get uh, wrapped up in kind of expecting or anticipating when this is going to be over. Is this the last bit? And you know, that can be, it can be helpful to take note of that sometimes, but, um, you know, generally speaking, it's what, you know, just to be with it as it is without concern about how much longer or how many times or 
whatever the case, can also be very, very supportive. Yes, good point. And then another thing about the news to it's useful to be aware of in, in the broader sense, um, just from the context of, of how it's evolved, because news is shifted into this 24 seven thing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it has become um, opinion and um, uh, projection, what might happen. Yes. A huge amount of the news is they're talking about what might happen and projecting a, if they do this, if they do this, if they do this. And it's not even really news at all in that sense. Right. <laughs> it's not it's not what has happened. It's just that ego tendency to project into the future. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, they're just, you know, a, <laughs> a living example of that. And the other part of it is because of modern communication, uh, technology and so on, um, they're, they're, they need to fill in this space. And so they're reporting on things that they never used to bother to report on. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll report on a traffic accident that happened uh, you know, hundreds of miles away or, or, you know, the other side of the world and, and sure. before you never would have heard of it. Uh, yes. It was, you know, it happened certainly, but and so there's an advantage to, to um, this diverse uh, being aware of what's going on. Uh, but really, I, like you said, it's not, it's not really about this event or that event and whether you should have done something or it should have, shouldn't have happened or, or that kind of thing. It's more about, being aware of the collective dynamics yes. that's taking place in that uh, in that broader, uh, you know, there's a call to be, uh, you know, the climate crisis is is calling us to be a little more, uh, you know, fair to the earth, and not be dumping dumping um, um, uh, pollution and and so on into our home, and uh, you know, take care of what takes care of us. Um, uh, to be stewards of Earth, rather, rather than to be, rather than to be uh, treating it like a garbage dump, you know, so on like that. Um, just to be um, more mature in a certain kind of way. Yes. <laughs> um, and it's a, it's a so it's a call it's a call for uh, being present uh, to to what's unfolding rather than. Um, yeah, because because the mind. When we're attached to the ego, the mind tends to, to be looking for what's wrong and who's to blame. Yes. And, yes. and ego, I mean, the news is kind of uh, has kind of favors this low and lowest common denominator value of the news and and is mm -hmm. focused on has become focused on what's wrong and who's to blame. Right. And and they kind of they can kind of can see, you know, they try and report positive news and people don't care. or They're not interested in the good things that are happening because they're because that ego needs to find what's wrong and who's to blame. Yes. Whereas when that softens, you know, that, that, you know, that need falls away. Yeah. And so it's a supply and demand situation. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because the, I mean, it, the news is supplying what the, as a part of the purification that we're talking about, as a part of the serving that we're talking, surfacing that we're talking about, that fear and that, um, uh, uh, you know, impulse to control expresses itself not just through the news but the watching of the news so that's why i was saying that the real step in maturity is observing what's going on while you're watching the news <laughs> it's not necessarily about what is going on in the news but what is your motivation for watching it you know is it is there something inside of you that likes the the fear and likes the uh feels like it can control something or um that it wants something to talk about, some drama, as you said. So it's kind of like the attraction to the drama of it. But we have to have this, this real sincere willingness to be able to see that and to own it, you know? And, and it's so easy to make it about all these seeming things that, you know, seem to be going on out there. But it all reflects back to what's going on here, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's no separation. There's no sitting up on this sort of like hilltop looking down and say, look at all this stuff going on in the world, you know, and how, uh, how, how can this be going on and uh, they should know better than this or whatever. Yeah. Uh, because then that, that very sort of separation is a part of what is expressing itself as all that material, you know? Yes. 
because that's one of the ways the, the, the uh, ego uh, justifies itself. It's like, I'm right, you're wrong. And so, yes. I, you know, and that, it, so it looks for justification of yes. that position. Yes. And, um, and that's, yeah, it illustrates it right there. And, yeah. uh, and that, but that's so divisive right in, in there. It's yeah. seeing, you know, everybody else is other. If you don't think like me, you're wrong, uh, right. you know, and all that kind of, and we're and all in can, this together. It's not, we're, there's no, there's no separate person here. Exactly. We're all part of the one. Exactly. And it can use spirituality as a part of that. I mean, we've seen that obviously like in religion, but even non-religious spirituality can be used as a part of like, you know, subtle forms of separation and these kinds of things. So it's the willingness to see where it, because it's facing the darkness in our own experience, you know, what we see as the darkness out there isn't as out there as we thought it was. <laughs> and, uh, and when we're willing to face and resolve that darkness here, then the way that we see the darkness out there totally transforms. It totally yeah. shifts. We're seeing the innocence of it. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And it's a beautiful thing taking place. It's, it's, it can be hard to be really honest with ourselves mm. and to see what we've been contributing to the collective. Yes. Uh, but it's a necessary scene. And once that's seen through, then it, it falls away. Because mm. it's, it's, not, it's not just this automatic program running in the background, blah, 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 blah reinforcing itself constantly um, it begins to be seen through and and then it loses its energy and it stops it stops and the monkey mind winds down and then those qualities we were talking about earlier about peace and and happiness and and love become much more present because yes. there's no room there, there's mm -hmm. room for them when, when the noise settles then then, then there's room for them so mm -hmm. it's a um A challenging part of the process sometimes but it's it's an important part and it makes such a difference in quality of life over time because enlightenment isn't a, a goal in itself it's just a it's just a platform for experiencing life mm. and it, it's the it's the beginning of a, a, a better quality of life yes and not just for you as a person because that's really not what it's about. It's 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 about raising the whole. Yes. So that shift allows you to contribute so much more. Yes. Uh, to the whole, and it's through many 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 of us that the whole is risen. Beautiful. Rises up. <laughs> and it is the whole that is enlightened. Yeah. 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 It's the whole that's waking up it's, to itself. It's only the whole that can be enlightened. Yeah. The and person never wakes up. We wake we up from the person. <laughs> it can't be owned by by anyone. It's not it's not for a gain. Yeah. Yes. It's uh it's something much sweeter than that. It's something much more fundamental. So there's there's one more uh, concept that I've found to be helpful <clears throat> called uh, that I call divine displacement, and it kind of relates to what you were talking about. Uh, in the beginning with these just beautiful um, depths of, of recognitions and um, refined experiences uh, and so on and so forth that are taking place right now that really there isn't a lot of context for even scripturally. Um, and the, the, the reality of pure divinity um, being clearly cognizant of its own truth uh, and its own radiance and uh, to just ever increasing uh, degrees of depth, even on a daily basis, um, through multiple bodies simultaneously uh, on on this planet, is really profound. And and as that radiance and as that brilliance is more clearly cognized and and um, realized mm -hmm. through the appearance of a human physiology then that displaces deeper and deeper levels of darkness, deeper and deeper levels of dense, unresolved, uh, like you said, kind of black <laughs> material 
And that, <laughs> so, it, you know, the light shines brighter into the back of the cave, you know, and, and that means that that stuff is seen more clearly and it kind of stirs it up. So it's a simultaneous oneness. It's not cause, causality because there's not two things. It's the same radiant divinity that is revealing itself and displacing that material within its own infinite expanse of light. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, there seems it right now to be this kind of really, really like great contrast, right? Because there's these just miraculous, <laughs> refined, brilliant uh, recognitions and experiences. And then at the same time, the darkest of the dark kind of sludge and, and, and residue is also <laughs> coming up, but it's the same in, in divine displacement. That's one and the same thing. It's the same process. Yeah. Yes. And that's a part of uh, just the, the great gift of our, our time, you know, if you can see it as a gift, <laughs> may, not, may not always be easy to see, but <laughs> by grace, we, yes, yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah, when the, if the washing machine is working overtime, sometimes it, it, the churning of the machines, are <laughs> <laughs> don't always recognize the light <laughs> yeah i find that you know um it it more and more it is you know it, it's immediate particularly when we that's kind of been something that has been dipped into you know regularly and so there's an understanding of the intelligence experiential understanding of the intelligence it does become more for, like immediately familiar recognizable uh in in the in the immediacy of that uh of of the surfacing or the transmutation or the, the purification that's going on but initially it can be retrospe retrospectively <laughs> that we have that you know the recognition that it was grace and everything was unfolding yeah. perfectly and yeah beautiful beautiful well i feel like we've uh we've covered quite a bit and uh do you have anything else that you'd like to add or that's good 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 all right. Thank you so much for talking with me, David. And uh, Thank you. we always give all glory to pure divinity. All glory to pure divinity. Thank you. Thank you.